Three, two, one, take it away. Hi, welcome to Candid's Podcast. I'm Katarina. And I'm Michael. And we are happy to have you back. Yeah. Today's episode, we just wanted to have a little bit of fun since summer is right around the corner. We also know what that means. Music and festivals. Yeah, lots of summer festivals. Something that we didn't participate in at all last year because we were traveling a little more. But we had talked about constantly because Berlin seems to have a lot of festivals yeah, we were trying to make it work. I remember there were two specific festivals that we were trying to go to, but I think one we just missed buying tickets for the dates that we liked. It was the Temple of Sounds. Temple of Sounds, with, and I think Lana Del Rey was the headliner. And um, Florence and the Machine, I think, was there. Oh. I, and Muse. Sorry, yeah, it was Florence and the Machine and Muse as, yeah. as, as the headliners. And then the other one was Lollapalooza Berlin. Which is when we were in Portugal, so... Yeah, we weren't able to go to that one. Yeah. But obviously the opportunities to to listen to music here is abundant just because Berlin is such a um, music-focused city. I think that's like Berlin has a lot of sort of core things that makes it stand out. But I think music definitely is one of those things. Yeah, for sure. And it, and especially electronic music, especially. That's what a lot of people associate with Berlin when they think of it. It's the club scene and the music. Scene. Yeah, the techno yeah. and and trance. But when you do come here, you really realize that people people just love music here in general. Yeah. Jazz is huge here. Totally, jazz bars. Jazz classical is a very big genre here. There's a really uh, great bar here in Berlin. And I'll have to look up the name, but it's it's uh, near Tempelhofer Feld. And uh, they do like late Friday night jazz nights. Oh, wow. That's Remember what was it called? It was called like Oliver's or... You showed me, yeah. Yeah, what was the name? But, but let me look that up. But why don't you sort of talk about... Why were you even talking about music? What sort of music means to like people and, and in general like why do people even like music or do people like music before we dive into that right why don't we do the new cadence I almost forgot about the new cadence yes so every week we just want to talk about a quirky topic or a new topic or trending topic so before i look up that jazz club or restaurant we're going to talk about my new cadence and this week it is about all about tacos Wow, all food related. Last week was M and M's. Was it? My, mine was M and M's. Yeah. Last week it's tacos. How can we always end up picking food trending topics? Because I think food is a topic where there's a lot of things happening and trends, like things things evolving. Yeah, the food scene moves fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know the phrase Taco Tuesdays, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, did you know that if you tried to use it as an actual common phrase, I believe only in the United States, I'm not 100% sure, that you would be legally sued. What do you mean, like, a, use it as an actual... Phrase? Like, in your in your promo. like. Oh, so as a business, you're not allowed to use it... It's trademarked. Your, by who? By Taco John's. So since 1989, the phrase Taco Tuesdays has been trademarked. And so, I believe it's only in the U.S., but... No business is allowed to even use that in any sort of marketing material whatsoever. Isn't that wild? And it's such a common phrase. Everyone says. I don't even know the business that you just mentioned that it's from. I know. So the, how can I know about Taco Tuesdays if it's trademarked and not allowed to use in materials if I don't even know the business that it originated from? I think taco tuesday got trademarked in only 1989 so not that long ago but i think before that it was a common phrase and then somehow this person taco john's this, this american chain trademarked it but recently why it's trending again is um taco bell mm -hmm. has um launched a petition a legal petition to have the trademark removed because the phrase Taco Tuesday should be able to be used by all taco lovers, as they say. And it was trending even more because LeBron James, you know LeBron James, like the superstar basketball player, he joined that peti uh, petition uh, saying that, let me, let me read this, it's, it's something about how it's for everyone. It says, 
On May 16th, Taco Bell announced it filed legal petitions to revoke a trademark on the phrase Taco Tuesday. This action is to liberate the phrase, takes, directly, takes direct aim at trademark holder Taco John's. Tacos have the unique ability to bring people together and bring joy to their lives and otherwise mediocre day of the week. Talk to a mediocre to an otherwise mediocre day of the week, Taco Tuesday. And yeah, apparently LeBron James is is joining in on the fight because he wants to be able to do that. And he says, Taco Tuesdays is a tradition that everyone should be able to celebrate. All restaurants, all families, all businesses, and everybody. That's so I don't want to dive too deep into my thought, but from an from a marketing perspective. That is like a tagline that someone at some point comes up with. Mm -hmm. So it is as if someone would say, everyone should be able to use just do it mm -hmm. because everyone should just do it. Mm -hmm. So it's... Sh it sh but just do it is, nice is trademarked. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone, which I, I kind of get it, the yeah. discussion yeah. and the debate. But I also think from when you look at it through a marketing lens... Yeah, from, where from, does it from, start and where does it end now for other people? Yeah, exactly. Like for you, it's like if you were the, because you work in marketing, and if your agency came up with the tagline Taco Tuesdays for Taco John's and they trademarked it or whatever, why would they give that up? Yeah, why would It's iconic. That? Yeah. It's become iconic. Just as you said, just like, just do it. The, Nike would never give that up. The only reason... For them to now give it up is because is if it becomes such a thing mm -hmm. that it's bad publicity for them. I, I think, and I actually think that's what Taco Bell's maybe trying to do. But hey, if Taco John's was smart, they would just um, just let everyone use that for um, residual. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just pay a residual, and you can use the phrase. Huh. Just like anything. Funny, right? And just like tacos bring everyone together. <laughs> so does music. So does music. Yeah. It's a great segue, actually. <laughs> it's a stupid segue. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So let me pull up this... Uh, this... Bar. This bar. And why don't you tell everyone what your thoughts are on why you think music does bring people together or why it's important? So from a very personal perspective... Yeah. I think of music more than a community thing for myself specifically. I think of it as a nostalgic thing. Okay. Because I think just like a scent, music can bring memories back. Can right. Transport you to a specific moment in time. Right. Be it a happy memory or not. So I think that is... That is, for me personally, something that is very unique about music. Right. And I think for me, it's like, whenever I think of music, I think about how because music is sort of sensory within your brain, like you hear it, and it's not like a movie. It's not like movies or photos or, or, or even real life that you see. It able it it washes over you and then like draws out this like emotion, you exactly. know, like whether it's anger or happy or sad or sexual, whatever that might be. And also, you you made a good point because a movie is all encompassing. It's yeah. multiple senses. Yeah, music is one sense. Yeah. so you can apply it as a layer onto every onto anything that is happening in the moment. Right, and I think that's what makes it a very unique experience in that way yeah exactly so trying to find this uh this jazz bar thing isn't it didn't you once say it's in temple of Fed? that's what that's what i i i thought yeah like in the old airplane ha hangar ha hangar i i can't seem to find it though and it's anyways if we do or or I think it must have also was it an Orville's. Orville's. That's what it's called. It's called Orville's. Orville's. So it is a it's a restaurant, Orville's Berlin. It's an event location restaurant, and they do this thing called Jazz After Dark. Yes. And they welcome weekly jazz artists playing from nine till midnight. 
there's also an amazing, an amazing, amazing um, restaurant or lounge that you and I have been to here called Rhinoceros. Yes, very cool bar. It's a very cool bar. If you're ever in Berlin, you definitely need to check it out. It is a, a Japanese whiskey based bar with charcuteries and snacks, and they play records only on old like sound systems. Yeah, and didn't you like say- old speakers, restored speakers from like when they were making them by hand? And they put up the cover of the record that they're playing that evening yep. or something. Yeah, I think a lot of I think a lot of uh, jazz bars do that, so you can kind of see which record you're listening to. It's got that sort of nostalgic feeling. And why do you think there's a lot? Why do you think jazz specifically is a is a music uh, style or genre that is associated to bars so much? Well, I think that's just I mean, just like La La Land, it's like jazz jazz bars have been a thing just like wine bars. because they've been around for so long i think this is the way the music i think jazz has always been in that in that space where where jazz to me always feels a little more intimate and a little more small so there's like this little stage a few tables at the front and in, in ted lasso there's even one of the episodes where they go to a jazz bar yes remember yeah. mm-hmm. and it's it's always been like that it's like a small stage a few Uh, jazz artists that play with each other and and that's why a lot of people have a hard time with jazz because i mean yes there's jazz bands but like like jazz sounds chaotic if you don't know what you're listening for it's, yeah totally it's usually a bunch of instruments playing the same beat but then one trickles off and does their own thing but maybe because of that because it because it's so chaotic sometimes maybe it also becomes a background noise and that's why it's also played in bars so much like i don't know it just sort of fades away yeah jazz is an interesting one like and i is it a genre of music that you like depends I, what you said earlier is exactly what i've said to you i find jazz exhausting sometimes mm-hmm. because i don't know what to listen to with jazz it has to be a specific style that i enjoy but when it becomes I think very fast and a lot of things happening at the same time, I sometimes struggle with it. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that you have to tune your ear to, mm-hmm. just like any music. I think you have to be able to tune your ear to enjoy a techno, you know, yeah. a trance. And then you have to be able to tune your ear to enjoying banjo, twangy style country. And for me, I've been very fortunate because I've always been surrounded by music. Like, I grew up playing the piano and then from there I wanted to learn the keyboard and then from there I wanted to learn the uh, guitar and I grew up in Calgary which is in my opinion fairly diverse in music like it's a it's a country based sort of city with a lot of country music which then bleeds into acoustic which then bleeds into folk music and as you know there's the huge folk festival which you love which we'll get into that in a little bit and then I grew up in the, you know, the angst era of alternative music. Yeah. Yeah. And also fun fact, because you talked about mu- uh, instruments. I, did you know that I have I don't know how to say that right. Um, I never learned an instrument. Yeah. You just, you're one of those people who's just never touched an instrument. I used to own like one of those wooden like flutes. <laughs> and I used to. Are you, talking about a, are you talking about a recorder? Huh? A recorder? Like that you play hot cross buns on? Do, do, do. It's like a long, that all kids have in school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what's it called? It's called a recorder. A recorder. What do you call them in German? Flöte. Flöte. <laughs> Flöte. <laughs> and yeah, you play hot cross buns and every little child... I don't even know what hot cross buns is. You don't know the song, hot cross buns? No. Like, mm, mm, mm. You know that song, right? Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna pull up. We a... play. Oh, I have to play you alle meine Entchen. No, that's what we learn on the piano. Can we do that on the thingy as well? I'm gonna pull up a recorder flute to see if it's the same thing. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. called a recorder flute. So it is a fluta, but the the type of is is a recorder like this, right? The wood Why one. Why is it called recorder? Because recorder makes me think you can record something on it. 
The recorder is a family of woodwind musical instruments in the group known as the internal duck flutes. I don't know why it's called a recorder. Okay. Anyway. It's called it's called a it's a woodwind and it is called a recorder with finger holes. Yeah, that's what I could play. <laughs> and it's self taught. Okay. So I so I learned the recorder in elementary school and uh, when you're in elementary school, there was a class for it and my pa- my parents bought me one. And then for some reason, I don't know what it is, but Asian kids and Asian parents, they want their children to play the piano. Piano. It's Be- always piano, huh? It's like an elegant yeah. piano or violin? Yes, those two. Those two. Those are the two two big ones that, that Asian uh, parents want their kids to play. And And then my first interaction after the recorder was... I learned to play the drums because mm-hmm. my cousin was like a little older than me. So he was already in that, he was like in the 70s and 80s. So that like pop punk era. So he bought a drum set and I loved playing it. Then went to the piano, then went to guitar. And so I've always been a little bit musically inclined with um, beat counting and, and, and understanding uh, music from that perspective which has actually helped me in my job a lot because I have to edit to music. Yeah. And that's why music's so important for me because in my work, it, like you said, why, why people love music is if you have the most beautiful movie but the wrong music, they're just, that emotion is only halfway. I have seen on TikTok specifically so many videos of uh, Harry Potter scenes with Voldemort. Yeah. And then putting like a, do, 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 do music. It's just like a quirky and music. It's like it changes the entire dynamic yeah. of the scene. It's, yeah. It's insane. Or you take a funny music. scene and put like dramatic music and suddenly you're like, whoa, this is dark. And so, but yeah, I think it's, it's I think it's very cool that music has the power to essentially transcend sort of all peoples and all languages. And I think that is why it's such an important thing because when someone speaks Chinese to me, I don't really understand it because I'm Vietnamese. When someone speaks uh, Swiss German to you, you don't really understand it or or Dutch, you mm-hmm. know, or, you know, we're not like we were just in France and our French is very average at best. And so we don't understand it. But guess what? When you put on music, even if it's a French song or a German song, I might not understand the words, but I still feel something like even when I hear sometimes hear like, German rap, mm-hmm. I can bop to it. You can move to it. Like you can, you can communicate with someone whose language you don't speak through music yeah. and dance. Yeah, exactly. Like, like let's use Spain for an, a, an example because our music is very emotional. Have you heard, listened to a lot of like flamenco style music in, in Mallorca and all that? Yeah, 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 of course. So yeah, in Barcelona they had like flamenco bars and we've been to them. It's like, your Spanish is okay, but not fluent. Yeah. And my Spanish is very, very little, right? Like not fluent by any means. I know a very small amount of it. But when we listen to something that's like flamenco, we understand it. We understand that, like that, that you know, the, the, ryth- the rhythmic beats of it. And, it, and, it, and there's moments where it's kind of fast and angry and moments where it's like soft and fluid. And that's why I think it's, I think it's so powerful. But what were some of your favorite genres and artists? Like... Mm-hmm. When uh, when I was thinking about this episode specifically, I think, unfortunately, music has taken a bit of a backseat in my life. Back, I think it had the biggest impact, or I was the most into music in my when I was 16, 17, 18. I think a lot of people are during that age. And that was when I listened to lots of, like, we were talking about it the other day because we saw a poster. I was listening to like Fall Out Boy, Death Cap for Cutie, yeah. uh, stuff like The Killers. Like I was, I don't even know what genre to put all. That was kind of like that was like pop alternative. Yeah, and some yeah. of it was more like emo. Yeah, I think. <laughs> like, like Avril Lavigne type stuff. No, yeah, and I think that was what I enjoyed most at that time. Yeah, and I think. If I had to say right now, yeah, like when you hear when someone says, "Hey, favorite artist to listen to," like what's the first thing that goes boom into your head that you would turn on right now? Nothing. 
You don't have one that you would directly go to. No. If someone said, pick your favorite artist to go to right and now. And that was always, when, when dating, that was always my biggest fear that someone would say, so what type of music are you into? Because my answer is a little bit of everything. Exactly. I'm that and, that, and that's fair. So we're married, so I'd ex I expect you to know this answer. If someone said to me, Michael, your favorite artist and their music, turn it on right now. What would it be? Justin Timberlake. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So Justin Timberlake has been my all-time favorite artist. Oh, I'm happy I got that. <laughs> and, and I think people always ask me why Justin. I'm like, well, one, he's, he's really talented for sure. And I think, yes, he lives in that, he lived in that pop music era. And then he, and then he sort of went into that um, N.E.R.D., Pharrell sort of rap hop, mm -hmm. rap, pop, air, whatever genre you want to call that. And then he went into sexy back. So he kind of like broke a different, a lot of different genres. And he just sort of fell into this like urban hip hop, pop genre. And then his, one of his latest albums went a little more country vibes with um, Say Something. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this one song that he released last year that I think I really liked with this female artist. I don't remember. Yeah. He's released a few with like yeah. Pharrell and, yeah. and, and some other stuff, but yeah, he, he, he sort of travels through genres very fluidly. Like he did the song with Jay-Z that was a little suit and tie. It was very mm -hmm. elegant. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he's my, he's my all time favorite artist. I've seen him, uh, only twice, unfortunately, like when he did a lot, few of other tours, either one, I couldn't get tickets or two, I was working or was too busy. But speaking of suit and tie, that was one of my favorite all-time concerts ever. Mm -hmm. So he did a stadium tour with Jay-Z and we were able to get floor seats mm -hmm. to that concert and to watch two legends go through their catalog but then do crossover songs together was one of the most undescribable things. And I don't know, it was one of my favorite concerts of all time because one, they were just so on point with their music and typically for me from what from what i've seen from the rap shows that i've seen they're okay because a lot of rap music doesn't really have bands it's usually like a dj playing with back but because justin had his you know tennessee kids band playing all his songs they were doing all of jay-z songs with live instruments so it just flowed back and forth between yeah it just i don't know it was hard to anyone who went to that jay-z justin timberlake tour at that time knows that one of the best tours like ever in my opinion but did you see any tours or concerts that you were just like completely blown away by i don't think i have ever been the biggest concert person i think music to me because I was, I kept thinking about genres as well that I'm into. And I think what came up for me is uh, actually musicals. Like yeah. I have enjoyed, when I think of live music, because mm -hmm. musicals are live music as yeah, well. Of course. That is probably what comes to my mind first. Mm -hmm. and, and which one was your favorite musical? I think my favorite musical, there's two. And I both saw those in london okay uh with two of my best friends yeah one was uh the lion king amazing uh i've seen it twice absolutely i mean the music everyone knows it so it's yeah like it's easy to sing too yeah yeah and uh the other one is wicked which wicked is cool so special to me too because that was a gift to, for my birthday from those two friends and i can still listen to the soundtrack mm -hmm. sometimes when i work i just put that soundtrack mm -hmm. on and it transports me like i said earlier back to that moment of going to this musical with same me. when i listen to some of the justin timberlake songs or jay-z songs that i remember from the concert it takes you back there yeah and having that live experience is like why people go to concerts or musicals or shows and when you're telling me this all i can think about is that is exactly our personalities. This is exactly who we are. Because as a, with a musical, that's sort of like an internal experience. Yeah. You're watching these people perform these songs and you're internalizing what you're seeing and how you're feeling to the show and the music. Totally. Now, no one is ever like screaming yeah. or like dancing. And concerts 
are made for extroverts. There's a lot of like, like, ha like dancing with each other, and it's yeah, and you're like cheering with other people that you don't even know, and so. And it's also funny because the other thing that I thought of was um, clubbing came to my mind with live music, yeah, of like course, DJs, yeah, of course, and my favorite um, music experiences, DJ experiences, were techno or house, mm -hmm. where. You don't, not like in a club where people mm. dance with each other. Mm -hmm. It's when everyone is just for themselves listening to the DJ and everyone's facing. It's, and, and, it's so, and it's so funny because, okay, so I was, when you, when you said that right away, again, my right, as soon as you said that, the second you said that, my mind jumped to um, a DJ show that I saw, I believe it was like at a warehouse or something in Seattle and it was Cascade. Mm -hmm. So it was more like, you know, it was more house style music or big, big stage EDM. And that was everyone standing, but more festival style. So everyone's dancing and interacting with each other. Whereas you're talking about more like Berlin style techno, where it's like yeah. you're singular and you're just bobbing your head back and forth. And it's just you and the music. You and, and the, you music don't, and the music. Yeah, sort of. And it's like this sort of one-on-one -on -one internal experience and my biggest memory is like this external experience yeah. dancing with one of my best friends curtis and just like going all out on the dance floor while cascade was was uh was playing but isn't that so so funny that our what we remember and what we gravitate towards is also what we gravitate towards in terms of and I had never thought of it that way. Yeah. Like I knew that you were always a bit more into, you know, specific artists, you were into concerts more than me. And I had, I guess I had also never questioned or, or those, I had never asked myself the questions that we're asking ourselves tonight. So. Yeah. Cause you don't, you don't even, you can't really name uh, artists because you like their music, but you don't even care who it is, who it is. Because it is about that song with what yeah. I am experiencing in that moment. But isn't it funny that you, when I said, who can you name? You're like, right away, you're like, Fall Out Boy. Like, you remember Fall Out Boy. <laughs> because we just saw a poster in Berlin recently that they're coming or something. And you kind of wanted to go see them. And I can say that recently you've been talking a lot more about music because we had just finished the Amazon Prime series. Daisy Jones and the Six. Yeah, Aww. and you love that book, yeah. which then turned into the show, yeah. and now you listen to that album all the time. So mm -hmm. if someone were to say to you, what do you love right now? You would probably be able to say <laughs> Daisy Jones and the Six. That's exactly what I thought of when you asked me. I'm like, I can't say that because it's not an artist. It's like a fake, fake band. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, I do know that you love Fleetwood Mac for real, yes. for real. So you do know them. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And, but again, I love them because... Fleetwood Mac has something to do with our story. Yeah, me. yeah. So, so you that's why remember I remember them. them. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we move on to sort of like summer festivals and stuff, sort of the main core of the topic, were you into like that whole um, two, early 2000s pop, you know, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC genre? Of course. Who was your favorite artist out of all of them? Britney Spears. I okay. Think, yeah. Yeah, I feel like everyone was during that time. I was at the perfect age when she started. I right. think I was right. 12. Yeah. And I think she really catered, probably also older, but yeah. I think when you're 12, you yeah. loved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my sister was also in that genre or that uh, age range. And I hated on, my sister bought all the CDs, like Britney, it's Christina, Backstreet Boys, and Sick. And I hated on it. I'm like, this music is terrible. And then as I grew a little older and as those bands also matured a little bit. I was like, hey, music is music and I really like them. And that's when I started paying attention to Justin Timberlake and his musical skills specifically, which led me down that road. Yeah. But what's funny is, even though I'm so into music, I haven't experienced that much music here in Berlin, which is so sad. We have not gone to a club here. Oh man, I'm we went to an out We went to an outdoor club on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, we went to an outdoor club and we've gone to like jazz bars and wine bars and listen to some live music out outside and everything. But I think the, the last, and we really tried to last year. To go we to, booked a concert. I, I was supposed to go to two concerts. Both of them were canceled. Yeah, we booked a concert and it got canceled. And who was that artist again? It was... Um, the who, He has the Berlin song. Oh, man. Australian? 
uh, why why can't I remember? Ah, oh, Rye X. Rye X. Yeah. In this beautiful venue. No, it didn't get canceled. The dates got moved, and we had a wedding to go to. If you're listening, it was your wedding. <laughs> and the venue is absolutely stunning, and I'm I was heartbroken about yeah. that. And we really tried last year, and so my goal this year is to experience as many. Uh, club shows, DJ shows, live events, and summer festivals here as much as possible. So what's your one dream about what you want to experience in Berlin specifically for music? So I want to hear something that is in that sort of singer-songwriter genre in a live intimate venue, like Temple Drome, kind of like Rye X or um, James Vincent McMorrow, for example. And then the second one is I would love to go to like a club night with an amazing DJ. Uh, I don't know who, but like just a really true Berliner style club night where it's just like, I'm just there for the music and just dancing. And it's just like, whatever else is happening around me, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I just want to. Those are some of my favorite music memories of all time. Yeah. I think Watergate in Berlin is having an amazing DJ coming. He's from Berlin and he's done a Europe leg of his tour. And I think he's ending in Berlin this weekend. So maybe we'll go to one and, and report back. That'll be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, but for sure, this summer, I want to go to an outdoor festival of some sort. Yes, I was so sad that we couldn't go last year because I think some of the venues here are probably also very unique. If we had been able to go to Tempelhof Sounds, that would have been so cool in an yeah. old airport. Like, a, yeah, like an iconic it, yeah. runway. Yeah. Like, it has to, like, Tempelhof, there's so much history there. Yeah. So. I mean, it, it, it's Berlin's interesting because they value music and I'm sure they value mu- festivals as well. But I just, I think they love things small and intimate, right? Like, like they don't really have the pull of like a Lollapalooza in Chicago. They have the Lollapalooza in Berlin, but it's not quite the same. They don't have like a Coachella. They don't have like an EDM or sorry, an EDC that just happened last weekend that looked wild in Coachella with Fred again and Skrillex and Tet4 playing. And they don't even have like a Tomorrowland. And they don't want to. I think that's the thing. That's, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. They don't want that, that yeah. kind of vibe. I remember when I was really into the rave scene, all I wanted to do was go to Tomorrowland. Oh, I've never wanted to go. I know. I mean, for me, I can see why you don't want to because it's just too big, too flashy with the, these crazy stages. But I don't like the music specifically, I think. Is it like, what about it don't you like? I think it's the, um, I don't even, again, I'm so bad at genres, but it's the that type of... Big stage festival electronic like that, music. That, like the, the like very fast, like jumping, I don't know, that sort of music. Yeah. yeah. Where you prefer more like, more like rhythmic, minimal yeah. techno yeah, style yeah, yeah. with like a heavy beat. Yeah. If you're listening to EDM. Yes. Yeah, but I think with but but that's the thing, right? I think if you're going to a festival, you it's hard to have that music. I'm sure at I'm sure at Tomorrowland they have a stage that mm-hmm. focuses on that, and you would be there the entire time. Yeah, but for someone like me, I like the show sometimes. And I think Tomorrowland is an experience you would never forget. For sure, yeah. Um, I know a lot of people here in Berlin probably travel to those festivals and everything, and. Things like like EDC and the one that I think a lot of Berliners probably love and travel to and a lot of people around the world is Burning Man. It's a huge thing here. It's not a festival. I know. <laughs> it's an experience. Yeah. People, I know. And we we were we were fortunate to be invited to Olivia Steele's studio, who is an artist based here in Berlin and in Los Angeles. And she has had amazing Burning Man installations. Mm -hmm. If you don't know her work, she's the one who's done installations on the playa where there's like words, quotes, and they're like lit up in fire a lot of the time. And she has a lot. Didn't you say she has a lot in Tulum as well? She does a lot in Tulum as well. Yeah. Um, Would you want to experience something like uh, Burning Man? Because it's more of an experience rather than a festival with art. Yeah, I think that is my, I've never been to one of those, but I think, again, because I connect music with a certain internal, something internal happening. So I think that would be something that I would really enjoy. Yeah. 
So it's right here. I like where this is going. She has like those little light installations um, by the sand and on the water and they're like little different quotes. This is the Burning Man one here. What if this is all real? And she had it like on a net and then it was against the playa and it's just, just sand everywhere. So that was really cool. I would love to go to Burning Man as well, but man, I think Burning Man is one of those things where if you, you're able to get tickets, you need to go with a group of people who are experienced. Mm -hmm. Because one, the camping would be so tough if you if you aren't experienced. The sand everywhere, the the like it's just a big open space of sand and desert. Yeah. So it's not like going to Coachella, where it's all like these beautiful porta potties and these cabanas and everything. It's not like that at all. So what? Um, so now that you've mentioned uh, a couple of festivals like Tomorrowland or Coachella yeah. and Burning Man, let's just call Burning Man a festival. Yeah. What Is that your top one? Out of all the festivals? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, what would be yours, though? Hmm. My instinct back in the day, I would have instantly probably said Coachella. Mm -hmm. And I think Coachella, simply because um, of the diverse type of artists that can play there, it ranges from electronic artists to... Um, to hip hop artists and and so I think that's an experience that I could still really enjoy now. I think the most life changing experience would probably be Burning Man for sure and the type of art and how I would want to experience something that is so different from anything that I know. Mm -hmm. I think Coachella would be comfortable, mm -hmm. right? But I think if I had to pick one festival, just one to go to, it would be Burning Man, I, I think. Yeah. But I don't know if I'll ever make it there, mm -hmm. to be honest. I don't know. I think that would be it. What about you? I think when I think strictly music. Actually, can I change mine? Yes, of course. Lollapalooza in Chicago. Oh, okay. And why? I think it's just iconic. It's been around the longest. It's been around forever. And again, it just has, I think it would be a musical experience like that has everything and then Burning Man would be my second one. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, when I think strictly music, Burning Man is not what I think of. Um, so my instinct went right away to, um, to British festivals. Ooh. Isle of Wight and Glastonbury. Oh man. I totally forgot. You know, what's so funny about that is I had thought about Glastonbury the other day and I forgot. I think for me, it'd be a coin toss between Lollapalooza or Glastonbury. Yeah, and I think, I don't know, for some reason... And Isle of Wight is, is being promoted right now, right? Yeah, I think so. And I actually wrote down um, who some artists were in the last year and who are coming. Yeah. So... Mm, I wonder if we could make a trip out to Glastonbury or Isle of Wight. So I think Isle of Wight last year was Muse, Rudimental, and Fleetwood Mac. Cool. And Glastonbury... Not specifically last year, I think, but over the course of a couple of years yeah. with Billie Eilish, Paul McCartney, Kendrick Lamar, and Diana Ross. Yeah. So it's a lot of, like, I like... Those are iconic festivals. Yeah, I think... Yeah. I think like, it, legends play there. Yeah, and that's... But so does Lollapalooza in Chicago. Totally. So yeah. Glastonbury is huge, but so is Lollapalooza in Chicago. And... and during the the era of like Woodstock being popular, like the 90s one and the, even the original one, Lollapalooza and Glastonbury kind of made it out of that and kept going somehow. Yeah. And I think Woodstock was just too hippy-dippy and just didn't make it out. And to be honest, maybe I also just don't know enough about um, Lollapalooza because here I feel like in Germany the ones are very... It's in Europe main, already. Yeah, it's very mainstream in a way, the artists that come. So. Yeah. Um, and I, specifically because of Woodstock, I picked the British ones because I feel that yeah. has, those have very much that, um, the same vibe. And that's why. I yeah. So, them. so as an example, Lollapalooza last year in Chicago was Dua Lipa, Metallica, Lil Baby, oh, Mainskin, uh, Charlie XCX. So it was, it was a pretty big lineup last year as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, what would be your top choice if you just had to pick? I think Glastonbury, probably. Glastonbury. And I would like to see Fleetwood Mac, but that's not possible. Why not? Um, 
didn't Stevie Nicks? Is she sick or did she pass away? Oh God, I don't know. I might be exposing I mean, myself. I mean, you could look it up if I'm you just want. Gonna look it up real quick. But... So, uh, Lollapalooza for Chicago this year is Lana Del Rey. Tomorrow, X Together, Billie Eilish, Red Hot Chili Peppers, 1975, Odessa, Kendrick Lamar. Mm. That's a crazy lineup, right? Yeah. Why did I think one of them passed away? Because it is not true. What <laughs> did I read? So, yes, maybe that will be possible at some point. Yeah. Do you want to know the lineup for uh, Glastonbury this year? Cat Stevens, mm -hmm. Guns N' Roses, Arctic Monkeys. Oh, I used to be very into Arctic Monkeys. Lana Del Rey. Mm -hmm. Elton John. Fred. Fred again. I've been wanting to see Fred again. Lizzo and Louis Cap um, Capaldi. Yeah, Capaldi. Mainskin, Slow Tie, Blondie. Man, Fat Boy Slim. Like Car Carly Ray Jepsen, Canadian. Uh, Little Nas X, Royal Blood, Alt J. Like crazy lineup. Rudimental. I wonder if tickets are even still available for that. Like honestly, because Elton John, like. Yeah, no, I think, and before we wrap up, maybe to wrap up, yeah. what would what would you say were your favorite festival experiences? If you had to pick a moment or a festival. Um, my favorite festival was, um, I can't even remember the name of it, but it was um, with uh, my, some of my best friends. We went to Kelowna to, an, to, I think it was like an electronic music festival, actually. Sounds of Summer, it was. And it was so, it was so epic because I had gone to Vancouver to um, see the Justin Timberlake Jay-Z show, which now I remember the name. It's called Legends of Summer. Mm -hmm. And I watched that concert. And then I was supposed to fly home. But somehow we were able to get tickets to Sounds of Summer. So... They, so, so while I was in Vancouver, we coordinated it uh, to get tickets to the Sounds of Summer. So I just skipped out on my flight back to Calgary, booked a Greyhound from Vancouver to Kelowna, showed up at their hotel. They greeted me at the hotel. And then we went to the three-day festival. Oh, cool. And what's even more insane about that whole thing was the tickets that we got were just for one day. Because we were just, let's go see one day. We wanted to go see Cascade. At the time, all of us were really into Cascade. And I remember so specifically, we were all standing in line getting to the front to get our wristbands, the different color wristbands. So Friday has a different color. Saturday has a different color. Sunday has a different color. All three days have a different color. And me, my friend Curtis, his wife Crystal, all stood in one line. And our other friend Darren stood in a different line. And... And the whole time we said, everybody stick together. Just makes it more easy. But Darren loves being Darren. And he went on his own. So us three, we went in the one line. And we were moving through. Because he thought his line was moving faster. So at first it was <laughs> moving faster. But then for some reason it stalled. And ours just zipped, zipped, kept going to the front. So when we got to the front, we got called to get our wristbands. The guy who was giving us the wrist, wristbands was so excited. He was like this young guy. We, and, and if you know my friend Curtis, he just has a lot of energy. I have a lot of energy. Chris has a lot, a lot of energy. We're all crazy extroverts. And we were like dancing and saying like, yeah, we're so excited for the weekend in Cascade. He accidentally wrapped us with the three-day weekend wristband instead of just the single day oh wristband. Oh my God. And so when Darren got up, his line... He must have got someone that was very stern. They just wrapped him up with a single day wristband. <laughs> so we ended up having to scalp uh, some extra uh, days for him. And, and it all worked out. We all went to the other shows. But it was just incredible to be able to see that whole weekend. And just the whole event of seeing Jay-Z, Justin Timberlake into this free three-day festival was sort of unforgettable. And just the music at it, I don't know. It was... It was cool. It was like rap, pop, hip hop weekend for me into Cascade beach party. I don't know. It, I'll never forget that. And especially that story of just of our friends. It was so funny. So lucky. Yeah. I think the guy was just so happy. And he didn't care. Like these little wristbands were probably in abundant. Yeah. So he was just happy. He was just tied up on a wristband. I don't know. What about yours? I think my favorite um, memory of being at a festival was actually a festival that isn't so far from Berlin. 
It's by Leipzig. It's called Melt Festival. I've heard of it. Yeah. I've never been. It's in this, um, it's in a very industrial looking like area. And they had a stage that was called, I don't know what it was called, but it was basically a 24 hour stage. So at any hour of the mm -hmm. day, there was a DJ playing. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the, um, the memory specifically that I have from that stage. It was from somewhere else, but it was the same idea. So we, I think at 4 a.m., Solomon, yeah. the DJ, yep. um, Solomon. came up and started playing. And it was dark when he started playing. And he his set, I think, went from like 4 to 7 or 4 to 6 or something. Yeah. And just his music standing there it was the last morning of the festival it was the day we were leaving and seeing the sun come up mm -hmm. and dancing to it that's my all-time favorite memory yeah what's interesting is for me personally we have i haven't been to a festival where it's gone all night up like that like mm -hmm. edc mm -hmm. and i don't even think coachella does that it like no, ends at a certain time yeah and this festival comes all night right there's one stage that is a all, kind of an all night sunrise it's stage. It's a 24 hour stage. Yeah. And this one, I think all of them start at four or five yeah. in the morning yeah. and go until 1 a.m. or something. But there's a little break, but there's one yeah. stage that's all. See, for me, that's definitely one thing that I want to do and experience is like a festival where, where, you're, where you start partying around 11 and then suddenly it goes up till the sunrise. And that in itself is are my favorite party in general. In, uh, yeah, I know. In general. Yeah, yeah. Leaving a club at ten a.m. But you know what's not good? Going to a rave in a warehouse and leaving when it when it's bright and sunny out. That to me is awful. Really, I love that. <laughs> what? Absolutely not. Like you arrive at the rave when it's pitch black out because you're usually showing up around midnight, and you leave and it's. 6 a.m. and bright and sunny. Oh, my favorite. But you know, everyone looks like a zombie. Yeah, I don't care. Go home, sleep. <laughs> well, I guess with that being said, we can wrap this up. Uh, I want to know if you are in a place where you can leave us a comment. Do you have any plans to go to any festivals this year? Who's, who's someone that you really want to see? What were some of your favorite moments? Because... You know, I would love to know what everyone else likes so that I can maybe learn from it and go to them myself. And can you relate more to Michael or me in terms of do you enjoy music in like an extroverted way or more in the introverted way? And I'm can you super curious? And if you can relate to us in terms of hating, leaving, um, I mean, at a festival, if you're if you're dancing and then the sun's starting to rise, that's different. I'm talking about when you're in a dark warehouse. Indoors and then outdoors. Do you yeah. still like it or no? Yeah. I do. Okay. So are you on team leaving the warehouse when it's still dark out or team leaving the warehouse when it's bright and the sun's risen and everyone looks like a zombie? Are you team boring North American old man or a young European woman? <laughs> oh man. Okay, well. That's pretty much it. Oh, and quickly, because we were talking about it, I don't think we're going to be able to go to Glastonbury because it is on June 21st to 25th. So I highly doubt there's any tickets, but... Yeah, that's exactly a month from Yeah, today. so if somehow we make it to one of the shows, we will we'll share it with you. But thank you for listening. Yes, if you like this episode, we are always excited if you share it with the people you love, if you give it a like. Subscribe on YouTube. All that stuff. There's just so many platforms. We'll say it every week, but share, like, rate. Thank you very much for l listening and or watching. And we will see and you will hear us. And we'll talk to you one. in the next one. Bye. Ciao. Bye.